Welcome everybody. Today I'm doing a guide for building your own recording PC. Now the first thing I have to do is address that age old question, Mac or PC. Now, there's gonna be people on both sides of the argument that say their platform is perfect and you have to use that platform, otherwise you're a complete noob, you have no idea what you're doing, and you'll probably die alone. However, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter. Both platforms work, you can be successful on either. Both have their pros and cons. Both occasionally crash, so don't believe the hype. Now, I personally prefer the PC because it's about two thirds the cost of Apple for the same power and also because it's completely modular. So if you just wanna upgrade a single component, you just pop it out, pop the new component in there, you're good to go. If you're watching this video, then I'm assuming you're probably leaning towards PC as well. However, if you're a Mac person, you're welcome to, maybe you'll get something out of this video. Now, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna show you how to assemble each component of the computer. There's a ton of videos out there that already, already do that. I'm gonna link a couple of those in the description below so you can follow those when you're done. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to tell you the things that you need to keep in mind as a studio owner, as a recording engineer, when picking out the parts for your new machine. There's some things that we have to keep in mind that your average PC builder does not have to think about. So what if you have no idea what you're doing? You know, how are you gonna build this PC? Well, there's good news. It's 2023. It's really hard to go wrong. You can buy a mid-level PC nowadays and it can do nearly everything you need as far as audio processing goes. Also, I'll link below the Newegg PC Builder that will take you step by step and help you pick out each component and make sure everything you pick out is compatible. That way you don't accidentally pick the wrong thing. I was able to walk through it earlier and built a PC that would do everything I needed for about $1,600. So as long as you use that PC builder and you abide by the principles I'm about to share with you, you will be good to go, really hard to go wrong. So with all that said, I'm gonna give you a tour of my machine. This is my NZXT full-size tower. As you can see here, it's got some acoustic treatment on the inside, although there's only so much acoustic treatment you can do in a case when it's got holes everywhere for ventilation. But I like to think it helps a little bit, so. Uh, also, you'll notice it was not clear because I'm not really into the PC light show thing where it, it glows and, and you know brightens up the whole room. I like my PC to, to sit there and not be distracting and just do its job. If you're really into the, like LEDs all over the place, you can absolutely do that when you pick out your parts, but it's just not really for me. So up front and on the bottom, I have three fans pulling cool air in. And then of course I have three fans pushing the warm air out of the case. I have my Corsair power supply, my PSU down here. It is modular, so I don't have a big old rat's nest of unused cable at the bottom. Uh, up front, I have three Samsung Pro solid state drives using an Asus motherboard. It's got eight slots for RAM. I'm only using four of those slots right now with eight gig sticks. So that's 32 gigs total that I have. Using an Intel i7 processor and my brand new 2080 Ti graphics card. And don't worry, I'll put all these details up on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm using, although this is a little bit older build, some of these parts aren't even available now. The biggest thing you'll notice is there's not a giant heat sink and fan right here on my processor. That's because on both my processor and my graphics card, I'm using these NZXT Kraken closed circuit water coolers. Let's go ahead and get into it. There are two big things you have to keep in mind when building a recording PC. So what's number one? What is the biggest thing that you have to think about? Any ideas? Noise level. Of course, most of us don't have a machine room, right, where we can put all of our noisy equipment. It has to sit next to us at our desk. And most likely, you track in the same room that you do your mixes in as well. So you can't have it distracting you as you're mixing or bleeding into your microphones. So you have to have a quiet machine. So what is what, what are the noisiest parts of your computer? Well, number one is the fans. And number two is the hard drives. Now hard drives, super easy fix, right? Just don't ever use spinning hard drives. There's no reason to have spinning hard drives in your computer in 2023. 
Use solid state drives, they're absolutely silent, better in every way. And then we'll talk about that more in just a second. So that immediately solves that problem. But what do we do about the fans? Let's talk about case cooling. You have to keep your PC and all the components inside of it nice and cool, and that means lots of fans. Just like I just said, you gotta have fans pulling that cool air in and pushing the warm air out. The two loudest fans in your case are gonna be the ones on your processor and your graphics card. Now that's why I put in these NZXT Kraken water coolers because what they do is they make the cooling more efficient. They distribute the heat across these very large radiators. So then you can actually run your fans at lower speeds, which means lower volumes. Now I would really, really highly recommend you put in one of these systems for your processor. It's gonna make a huge difference in your noise level. For your graphics card, however, you, you don't even really need a graphics card as big as this. I do a lot of video editing and occasional video gaming. so. I got myself a pretty beefy card that made a lot of noise. Uh, so that's why I did it. But if you don't do those things, you don't even really need a graphics card this big. You can get away with something smaller with, uh, with fans that may not make as much noise. Now, the, the cool thing about graphics card as well uh, is that if they're not under a lot of load, they're not getting hot and they don't even turn their fans on in a lot of cases. So if you're just working in your DAW uh, your graphics card may not even be running its fans, so it could be silent. Uh, it just depends on what you get. Now, whatever you do, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you replace every fan in your case with Noctua fans. Even the ones that came with the Krakens, uh, I replaced those with Noctua. And that's because Noctua is the most efficient and most quiet fans that I have found on the market. And I, I'm gonna give a hat tip out to Linus Tech Tips. I found out about Noctua on his channel and I have, have not stopped using them since then. Uh, the, they are amazing. And of course, I'll leave links to those um, down below in the description. So again, just to recap, the number one thing to keep in mind when building a recording PC is that noise level. All right, so replace the fans, replace the spinning hard drives. What's the number two biggest thing to keep in mind? It's your read and write speed. And that's where your solid state drives come in again. Let's say you're working on a really big session, you're, you're playing out like 50 tracks of audio to your musicians and, and they're playing instruments and you're, you're recording another 20 tracks of audio at the same time. Now your computer has to be able to read those 50 channels of audio off your hard drive to play them out while simultaneously writing the new 20 channels of audio to that same hard drive at the same time. That's your read and write speed. Now in the old days, you would have had to have gotten multiple hard drives and, and combined them into a RAID set or turn Pro Tools into round robin mode, which would alternate which hard drive it's recording to and, and that way it would deal with that, that load or you do some combination of the two, but that never ended well. But guys, it's 2023 and we don't have to do that. We have solid state drives. Read and write speed on, on your standard SSD will handle any session you can think of. And also they're getting cheaper year over year. I was on Newegg today and I found a two terabyte SSD Samsung Qvo for $130. 130 bucks for two terabytes. I feel like just five years ago, that was like $1,000. I mean, it's coming down so much. Again, there's no reason to ever have a spinning hard drive in your computer in 2023. Now, you will need two of these drives, uh, one for your system and your software, as well as one for all of your session files. Now, uh, I would recommend not going smaller than a terabyte because again, it's just so cheap. You might as well go for the larger capacity. And also, I really like the Samsung Pros. They're a little bit more pricey, but their, their lifespan's a little bit longer, so that's why I like them. But the, the Samsung Evos and the Qvos are also good if you're on a budget. So then you may be asking, okay, what happens when I uh, have more than a terabyte worth of information? What do I do about long-term storage? For that, I recommend you just get one of these simple drive docks. They're really inexpensive. And then when you're ready to pull sessions off your PC or hand sessions off to a client, you just slap a hard drive in there and you're ready to go. 
Now for this, your hard disk drives or your, your spinning hard drives are, are fine to use for long-term storage, right? They're super high capacity. Pull the, the data off of your PC, put it onto the, uh, the hard drive and then throw it into a drawer. They work really well for that. All right, so there's just a couple more things. Let's go over real quick with your PC build. Let's talk about your case size. Like I said earlier, I do have a full-size tower. I really like it because it gives me a little extra space to work in, extra space for, for cable management and for fans. Now, yeah, you can fit all of this into a mid-size tower. However, it's just going to get a little bit cramped. And uh, This is NZXT. If you haven't noticed, I kind of like NZXT. But at the time of filming this video, I didn't see that they were still making full-size towers. So if you're going to go with a full-size tower, then just take your pick. Uh, if you do go with a mid-sized tower, check them out because I, I do like their stuff. They, they make really good quality cases. Uh, On to your RAM. I would go with 32 gigs of RAM. You, you could get away with 16, but there's a noticeable performance boost between 16 and 32. And like I said, everything's getting so inexpensive. Uh, it's really not that big of a cost difference. Uh, however, if you're on a tight budget, you can't afford it. That's the great thing about PCs. Uh, just buy 16 now and then add a couple more sticks when you can afford it and upgrade to 32. CPU. Uh, I prefer Intel processors. I used to lean towards AMD because they're less expensive. However, after having a number of issues with them, I switched back to Intel and haven't had any problems since. Um, you could probably get away with an i5 here, but if you can't afford it, go with an i7 or higher. Motherboard. Now, you'll basically just pick whatever motherboard goes with your processor. Uh, if you do use the new Egg PC Builder, again, it won't let you pick things that aren't compatible. Um, you may want to decide whether you want eight slots for RAM or four, uh, but that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Power supply. Now, you do need to make sure your power supply has enough power to power everything in your machine. But again, if you're going to use that PC Builder, it won't let you choose something that's underpowered, so I highly recommend that. Also, make sure whatever you get is, like I said earlier, fully modular, because if you don't, you're just gonna have a bunch of spare cables down here for all the stuff that you don't plug in. When it's modular, you don't use the cable, you just unplug it and store it somewhere. It keeps everything nice and clean. And finally, your graphics card. Again, if you don't do any editing or video gaming, you don't need something this beefy. Graphics cards can get really expensive really quick and eat into your budget. If you don't need it, just go with something small and inexpensive. However, if you do want to get a really nice graphics card, consider putting one of these closed circuit water coolers on it to, to help with the noise. Now, I prefer NVIDIA because it pairs with Intel. However, if you end up going with an AMD processor, you may end up with a Radeon graphics card. It really just depends on the way you want to go. And of course, don't forget to pick yourself out a nice new monitor, mouse, and keyboard. You may also need a tube of thermal paste if you plan on replacing the cooler for your CPU or GPU. Once all the parts come in, you just use one of the PC building guides that I'm gonna link in the description below to put it all together, and then you're off to the races. And now you have yourself a brand new recording PC. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, anything, of course, leave them in the comments down below. Remember to like and subscribe as always. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this long. We'll see you next time.